top level view of it we will discuss all this in much more detail in the course okay uh, we can even remove this abstraction from this course just now now what is very important to look at is the layout so you have spent a lot of time working on the layout of the standard cells where we said that for every structure you would want to keep a distance of half drc from the pr boundary you remember just now in the morning vaishnav was asking sir contact can i remove that half drc rule just in the morning vaishnav was asking so over there we talking about no sharing nothing in fact leaving half drc from the cell boundary memories i would want to talk about the layout because in memories you say that you would want to share as much around the cell boundary as possible because you have a structured array you know that your memory cell is abutted with another memory cell only not that aoi 221 will be abutted with aoi 121 you know it is it is another memory cell because you are aware of this and because there is a structured array you actually start to share devices across the cell boundary so if this blue line is the cell boundary you see i share so can you tell me which are the pull downs and which is where is the pull up and where is the pass gate smallest one uh, in the center is the pull up yeah the one in the envelope and well would mean that yes. we are talking about the mass over there so that is the pull up so these two are the pull ups and this connection would then be the connection to vdd hmm then this one the smaller the, so it means one of these is pass gate the other one is pull down from the snm constraint we realize that for cell stability pass gate has to be more resistive than the pull down so the top one is pass gate and over here the bottom one is pass gate and the other device is pull down so this connection would be for the bit line this would be for the bit line bar hmm and then this connection will be for ground and then this would be word line connections only in memories you use this kind of a long contact you made layouts if you make a rectangular contact what do you see you see an at once a drc comes hmm so vaishnav was talking about contact to contact spacing and how it is impacting the area hmm so in a memory because density is is of importance what we do is instead of putting two contacts one contact separately on the poly and one contact separately on the active and then maintaining a drc between them we actually kind of merge two contacts and form a long contact and this long contact is allowed to be used only inside a memory why can you do this only inside a memory and not elsewhere any ideas Uh, sir, because we are going to drop some uh, drop some vias very very. Uh, we know we know where where all the points are where we are going to drop the vias. So some DRCs can be adjusted. Yeah. See, we know that this is the only configuration in which you are allowing these long contacts. So you can play with the optics. See, why are these DRCs there? When we were discussing early on in the course, we were talking about DRCs and how. how we have this one 93 nanometer light which is still used to make features which are 28 nanometer wide and uh, and all that is it not so we said that okay because of this large wavelength of light uh, putting stuff on mask is very complex so you can't do it therefore the rcs ha huh? constrained the rcs that poly has to be in one direction only and this and that and what not now it means that all those rules are largely because of optics and if the op in optics you can predefine patterns okay then you can make the diffraction plate in such a way that you can still make structures well so by playing with what is called as resolution enhancement techniques uh, we allow large contacts long contacts only inside the sram cell because we know that this is going to be available in this array only and nowhere else 
and in this array also there is a pattern a fixed pattern in which they will be there so i have a clear diffraction pattern for which i have to optimize my uh, mask making process and therefore it is only allowed in the memory cell and nowhere else okay they show uh, the contacts that are closed and violating drc they should be made in different mask right they should be made in different different mask means uh, if they are made in same mask so uh, means if the minimum so drc is not nowhere known, nowhere yeah. outside the memory you are allowed to violate any drc debuji yes sir okay so you not even think about how to do it only inside the memory drc violations are allowed for the purpose of gaining more density and this is approved or this is designed by the technology team not by you you can only request they will say if they will do it or not if it is possible on silicon or not yes sir okay so you don't even think of violating drcs not allowed okay shubham okay so these long contacts you will see only inside the memory cell okay and then you have these metal layers you will see these uh, small small stubs for connecting these contacts to bit lines um, vdd the world line stubs hmm and the ground so you will notice that now when you made this stub for ground there is a particular via which is shared across four memory cells see this contact this via they were shared across two memory cells upar niche but this these vias and contacts which are coming on the corners are shared across four memory cells so while in sanet cells you would not allow any sharing in fact if you were to follow sanet cell rules you will have to have memory cell which is this big but by allowing the sharing you've reduced the memory area to this much okay and then this is the word lines the word lines are running and you have these stubs for ground okay so an array then appears to look like this so this is a 2 cross 2 array there hmm? and that is how you ensure that srams are much much denser than latches and flip flops and other shift resistors that we were talking about in the earlier in the day okay any questions here okay so with this layout part also done we need to talk about sense amplifiers so whenever you talk about memories you know people talk about bit cells they talk about bit cell stability they talk about bit cell layout those who know memories they will also talk about the layout and then they will talk about the sense amplifier so i'm just giving you a quick one or two slide glimpse of a sense amplifier we said there is a memory array word line would come it would select a bit cell and that bit cell will discharge a bit line and then i will get to see the output somewhere down there now this bit line has a huge capacitance on it hmm if i want to discharge this particular bit line there is some you know i had as what we said we we had pre charged this capacitance to vdd i want to discharge it to at least vdd by 2 to, to say that i have a zero so what kind of charge are we talking about p vdd by 2 kind of charge we are talking about and depending on the cell current there is a time ha huh? there is a time it will take to discharge the particular bit line in this particular example that is given you don't need to even go into detail we are talking about 7.5 nanoseconds hmm you want to operate your memories at at least 1 gigahertz you have only 1 nanosecond available with you so what to do so you say oh i don't want to discharge full vdd to get to less than 1 nanosecond i can discharge only to vdd by 8 let us say or 
still lower we'll be by 10 we'll be by 12 the lesser i discharge the faster i can be so what do you do you say oh so let us put an amplifier down there which would amplify a vdd by 12 discharge into a full vdd discharge at the output hmm that is why a sense amplifier is the motivation for using a sense amplifier clear any questions around that so i'm telling you like a story you can read the book and they will tell you a lot of other details i'm just telling it to you like a story so that you can get the intuitive feel of it we will do all the other details when we do the course but since we are touching memories in the dvd course you should know at least these few four three four things five things about memories hmm so we need sense amplifiers to get the speed a sense amplifier is typically a latch again and if you notice this appears to be the same structure as a memory cell except that there is an enable gate there okay so what happens is what happens is you discharge the bit line and that discharge starts to appear on the internal nodes of the sense amplifier when you have the sufficient discharge for this latch to operate you turn this enable signal on so till that time this was not a latch because the enable was off there was no ground supply coming there but when the sufficient differential is made available you turn enable signal on as soon as you turn the enable signal on what happens this works as a latch this small differential gets amplified and you are able to so the small differential between the two is amplified and you are able to take one of the nodes to zero and the other back to one okay and what is important is that when you turn this on you see that these pmoses will automatically turn off so when you do this when you discharge one node to zero and recharge the other node to full vdd you are only talking about this capacitance now not about the entire bit line capacitance so in a way this full swing you have limited only to a small capacitance so sense amplifiers also help to save power hmm? so we started to use sense amplifiers to gain speed but it is very important to realize that sense amplifiers or less discharge on bit lines also helps to save power so sense amplifiers are therefore very important circuits to be used and understood when you design memories so in the memory design course there will be a project or two on sense amplifiers also hmm? so with that i think so there are other things which we have already done row decoders so decoding we have already take you know when we were doing logical effort and everything i'm not sure you realize but we already took a decoding example only hmm? so decoding we have kind of already taken care of and uh, sense amplifiers is the part of io that we have taken care of so in this session i have kind of introduced you sporadically to the most important components of a memory any questions so what is the minimum amount of time for which uh, we need to wait till this uh, bit line is uh, a bit line appears at the sense amplifier input and then we turn on the sense enable signal yeah so just like any other amplifier ranjit a sense amplifier also has a minimum offset requirement to be able to distinguish zero and one correctly yes sir hmm? so that offset is characterized we will do that in the memory design course that offset is characterized and then it is ensured that the offset that appears on the bit lines or the differential that appears on the bit lines is more than that offset okay okay so there is something called as replica path inside the memory we will talk about it in the mdt course which uh, is used to do this tuning okay sir 
okay but yeah this is characteristic of the that's of the sense amplifier so if you end up taking a sense a project on sense amplifier like a few of your colleagues have actually taken a project on sense amplifier in 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 dvd course also you if you attend the presentations uh, you are all expected to attend the presentation on friday and saturday so when you will attend the presentations you will get to see the constraints and the details about it okay sir okay sir yes vaishnav sir i have a basic question sir so am i allowed to run my poly in a horizontal direction sir actually previously when we were uh, uh, talking about this in one of the class i remember that uh, you said we are uh, we will not be using poly in horizontal but i can't exactly remember what was the reason for that uh, okay what could what can you imagine to be the reason for that sir actually i got this doubt because we were you uh, in, in a 60 sram layout polys were horizontal sir so i can rotate them and all will be so uh, what is important is there should be one direction yes you can rotate the layout until we all vertical then okay 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 sir nahi hmm. sir exact reason sir was that cross talk reason for that no diffraction optics resolution enhancement techniques do not allow poly to be run in two directions otherwise the mask will not be generated in the right way okay okay sir thank you sir okay so it was lithography yes akash so one more reason can be this also ki if we use one poly in vertical and one horizontal then the metal layers that we use to connect them there will be some vertical metal layers that will waste our area yeah yeah but no that is not the reason the reason essentially is that uh, uh, optics doesn't allow that poly ke upar aapko har taraf thoda na metal lagana hai metal you only need to take near a contact so you have to put a contact on poly and then only that contact needs to be tapped by a metal is it not yes sir yes sir so whether poly is horizontal or vertical doesn't matter you're only looking at a point on the poly then hmm okay okay sir so but the reason essentially is optics 